Hey everybody, I'm Brad Lewis and this is my Finance 451 project. Um, our goals for the project was to analyze 10 companies split between two different industries, um, narrow down the best investment from the two industries, and pick one of the two from each industry as the best investment overall. Um, the two industries I chose to do were technology and internet. Um, for technology industry, Sony Corporation, Microsoft Corporation, Apple Inc., Samsung Electronics, HP Inc., and then for the internet industries, I chose to do Amazon, eBay, Facebook, Yahoo, and Netflix. Um, we're going to start with the technology industry first. And this here is my cash, current, and quick ratios. It's the numbers for all five companies. And I'm going to show some charts coming up soon. For the cash ratios, you can see at the top that Microsoft has a strong cash ratio showing they are very liquid and stay at a constant pace for all five years from 2011 to 2015. Every other company stays below the one ratio, but Samsung is making a steady increase going over one in 2013, and they're continuing to grow as you can see with the green line here. For current ratios, all the companies are floating at the one line for the current ratio. Uh, Microsoft is once again steady, and Samsung is making a definite climb. Microsoft and Apple have no trouble paying back liabilities while I feel HP, Sony, and Apple, who are the bottom three, and you can see Apple dipping at the end in 2014, um, they're having trouble paying back their liabilities. For quick ratios, as you can see, most of the trends for the three ratios stay the same. Uh, Microsoft stays steady and makes more on assets per dollar than any of the other companies. As you can see, Samsung is still climbing in this category as well. The other three companies are about floating under the line of breaking even, and you can see Apple is falling off towards the end again in 2014. We're also going to take a look at the ROE, ROA, and profit margins for these five companies from the years 2011 to 2015, and here are all the numbers for those three categories for each company. For the return on equity, um, Apple shows tremendous upside staying above the rest of the companies and keeps a constant balance every year. As you can see here with the purple line, you can see them staying steady throughout the five years. Um, Microsoft and Samsung also perform well with ROE, staying consistent throughout the years. Who are the yellow and they're the green lines right here, staying across. Sony has stayed under zero, showing that not, they do not generate profit with every dollar of equity. And there's the bright blue line here, and you can see they only go above zero in the year 2013. And HP took a hard fall in 2012, but it recovered and maintained a good ROE after that. See, our, um, HP's up there with Samsung and Microsoft after the year 2013. For return on assets, Sony is once again leading all the companies in ROA meaning that they have great management and utilize their assets well to get great returns. Microsoft started off well, but has since then been on a steady decline, but it hasn't been enough to worry. Um, Samsung has stayed pretty consistent while HP has taken a big dip in 2012, but flattened back out in the following years after that. Sony once again is below zero, which could be an effect of poor management with assets, but they are slowly increasing back over the zero mark, which Sony seems to be quite the concern through the six categories we've already talked about, while Microsoft and Apple are performing well. For profit margin, Apple and Microsoft are again dominating in this area, both staying around the 20% range consistently. Meanwhile, Sony is still struggling also in this area, only jumping over breaking even in profit percentage on one year in 2013, which you can see right here, which was the same as their ROE. Samsung has been steady and consistent along with HP once again, who seemed to take a dip in 2012 but recovered. When it comes to debt, we're going to look at total debt ratio. And HP has an overwhelming total debt ratio, which may not be safe with most of their assets coming from debt. Sometimes debt is a good thing, but HP seems to have taken it too far and it's becoming a very bad problem for them. Microsoft is on an incline, but they also show great results in previous charts of growth and profit. Sony and Samsung take on a little debt compared to their assets. Sony takes on little debt to assets, but also does not produce a lot of assets, as we can see in the previous charts. Apple is on a high incline, but may be due to technology expenses they incur and have to invest in to reach a higher profit margin.
I would not be too concerned with Apple's performances in this area. Another debt ratio we're going to look at is debt to equity. And what it, looking at the leverage of these five companies, HP uses a lot of debt to fund various projects to increase its own value. They have a relatively high debt to equity ratio, which could be a factor to really consider looking at HP stock. Very high risk, but it also yields a very high return. Sony seems to have landed right in the middle, but towards the end have became a more safe investment with less, less reward. Apple and Microsoft both have increased their debt to equity ratio in the last few years. Meanwhile, Samsung has stayed low, making its stocks a low risk, low return reward. When looking at equity multiplier, Sony is increasing every year and staying high with their equity multiplier, showing a large part of their asset financing or through debt, which could be a direct result of their ratios from earlier in the charts. HP is in a good range and good consistency using debt to increase value, but they do not use too much, making it too risky of an investment for people. Looking at Apple, Samsung, and they use the less debt to finance their assets, but they're still producing good assets as we can see from the current quick and cash ratios. For the time interest earn ratio, for Apple shows to be too high indicating they are paying down too much debt with earnings that could be used to diversify other projects they have going on. When looking at Microsoft and Samsung, it has a good representation of how good they can meet their debt obligations. Sony and HP are pretty low and could be a scare that could lead to bankruptcy if numbers were to decrease any lower. Um, with Microsoft, you can see that they do a good job paying back their debt obligations, even though in the previous charts you can see they were taking on more debt to increase their capital. So next we're going to look at the cash coverage ratio. And it's Apple shows a huge jump in decline in cash coverage ratio, but as long as they stay in the upper numbers, they will have their ability to pay their interest. The only companies of concern are Sony and HP, once again, who need to focus on getting these numbers back up. Another important factor to look at is total asset turnover. Looking at Apple, Samsung, and HP, they are all floating around the same total asset turnover, showing they are generating more revenue per dollar of assets than Microsoft and Sony both. Sony and Microsoft are much lower on internal asset turnover, but not always necessarily a bad thing. But when comparing them to companies in the same industry, it could be a place of concern. Um, next, we're going to look at price to earnings ratio. Microsoft and Sony really are doing well with their price to earnings ratios. As you can see, they're both climbing, even though it shows Apple falling off. And they're expecting high earnings growth in the future. So investors are picking these two companies to expect higher earnings than what they're earning now in the near future. So that could be a good lead towards a good investment. Apple and Samsung are falling right in the middle and staying pretty con constant. HP may be of concern with them fluctuating so much. Investors may have a hard time figuring out what they are willing to pay for for earnings. And next we have market to book ratio. Apple is performing extremely well and consistent in market to book ratio and shows investors are expecting managers to create more value from their assets. Microsoft has a very fluctuating market to book value, making it harder to judge what to expect from management in that company. HP, Samsung, and Sony all are staying consistent and on the bottom end of the five companies in this area. As you can see, Apple and Microsoft really are leading the industry in most of these charts and most of the ratios. And for economic value added, you can see that Sony, Microsoft are the two negative companies here, and then while Apple, Samsung, and HP are positive. So next we're going to move on to the internet industry. And once again we have the cash, current, and quick ratios for the five companies, which are Amazon, eBay, Facebook, Yahoo, and Netflix that we're going to take a look at here. For the cash ratio, Facebook dominates the cash ratio results here, staying above four throughout all the years, with serious growth in the years 2012 and 2013. They had remained constant. As you can see here, they took a big jump from 2011 with just above four, right under 10 here in 2012, and then once again over 10 in 2013. Yahoo has also stayed constant and had a recent spike from 2014 to 2015 
they jump from right under two to a little bit over four, so that's a good outlook in the near future. The other companies have stayed moderately low and under the ratio of one, which isn't a very good outlook for them. When looking at current ratio, Facebook leads again with the current ratio with a huge increase through the years. They have no trouble paying back their liabilities whatsoever. With the other companies being low, except for Yahoo, they may have struggled some to pay back liabilities, which could be a big area of concern. You know, a big thing with Facebook is they may be taking on a liability, but they're able to pay it back easily and get more growth through their assets. Looking at quick ratio, as you can see, the company stay the same through the three ratios with Facebook at the highest and still performing well. There's a big trend, if you can tell through the, all the charts that we've already looked through for cash, current, and quick ratios, that all three trends stay about the same for the companies. Yahoo's making a jump from, again from 2014 to 2015 along with eBay, showing that they are increasing their liquid assets, which is good for investors all around. Netflix and Amazon continue to underperform and they stay under one on this ratio as well. So next we're going to look at ROE, ROA, and equity multiplier once again. And this once again covers from 2011 to 2015 for the five companies. So first we're going to take a look at return on equity. All the companies here seem to stay pretty consistent with each other throughout the five year span. Netflix started extremely high but since then fell off and flattened out to a good level. Now as you can see Netflix here is this orange line and they started right below 50 but they've fallen down to in between the 20 and 10 range and they stay pretty consistent there. With them being a newer company, Netflix hasn't been around as long as these other companies on the list, so all their numbers are going to be a little more spiked and different. Yahoo has fluctuated each year and in the recent year of 2015, they actually fell below into the negative. They're the only company in the negatives here, as you can see, they fell way below and they're about 12 or so under that line for their return on equity, which is a very bad sign, not something you want to look for in a company. For return on assets, these five companies stay pretty consistent besides 2012. Yahoo yet again has huge ups and downs on their assets and in 2015 is down to negative eight, which is not something, you know, you don't want to invest in a company that fluctuates as much as Yahoo does here on their return on equity and assets, which is two of the main factors that you want to look at. All other companies are showing a good trend where they all have fallen from their initial mark in 2011. Amazon is just floating above the zero line, so that might be an area of concern that you haven't seen any growth from them from 2011 all the way to 2015. But as you can see here at Facebook, they took one dip in 2012 and since then they've been one of the most profiting companies here on return on assets. When looking at profit margin, eBay and Facebook are doing a great job with their profit margins by maintaining a steady percentage throughout the years. Facebook took a huge fall in 2015 into the negatives paying back almost $1 on top of every $1 in revenue. They were matching up to 100% of what they were already paying back. Amazon is staying pretty even, not doing much for their revenue, and the same with Netflix. But as you can see here, eBay and Facebook both, they're getting way more back on their $1 than they were than every other company on the list. So moving on to debt, another, you know, another big category you want to look into when analyzing companies to get your leverage and how much you know, they're taking on and not to resent false information on their assets. Amazon and eBay have been on a steady increase using more and more debt towards their assets as the years advance. Which, I mean, that could be two different things. That could be either they are falling short on assets and need more to make up, or that means they're growing and they're prospering and they're taking all more to be able to produce more. Facebook in 2011 and 2012 has minimized their debt and their assets through the years as they progress. Yahoo and Netflix have stayed consistent with their numbers through five years. Looking at debt to equity ratio, Amazon has an alarming increasing debt to equity ratio whether they are taking on too much debt to increase their value or needing extra funds. It is a very high risk investment but yields higher returns eBay is along the same trend as Amazon, but at a more constant rate. You can see Facebook, Yahoo, and Netflix has stayed constant and low for the five years, making them a safe investment, which yields a lot less returns. Looking at equity multiplier, Netflix is consistently high while Amazon is on a steady increase every year after that. 
While the higher equity multiplier shows a large portion of their asset financing comes through the debt that they have, eBay, Facebook, and Yahoo are on the same path and staying consistent every year at the bottom here. As you can see, that was the same as the previous debt charts that we had going on. Looking at Tom's interest earned, Facebook shows an extremely high ratio here, which is not good when looking at investments. Shows an undesirable lack of debt in the company that they don't want to take on. eBay started showing great numbers, but has been on a decline every year after that. Netflix and Amazon 